Welcome back to my channel. This is Didsbury Art Studio and I'm Sally. And in today's video, I am going to be making some flounces with you. I really like the style of these ruffles and I found some fabrics that I already had, some old dyed ones and marbling ones. And I thought I would cluster them all together and layer them up to see what sort of effect we can get. So I hope you enjoy this video today. It's a type of ruffle. I've just pinned it down vertically, but you can have it horizontally as well. So I'm going to show you how to create this. So this one is with this circle. So I've actually got some A2 paper here and I'm going to fold it into quarters. And to create the circle, what we are going to do is use the tape measure and from the corner I'm just going to hold this tape to the corner like so grab my pencil and I'm just going to just spin that down and make a mark where the two inches are so I'm going to turn it over there and I've mark it here and here and when you've got that you can just Join the lines together. And then I also want to have a really wide flounce created. So I'm going to pop my tape measure back over here and I'm going to do it at eight inches. So again, I make some marks, keeping my finger over here in the corner. I'm just gonna make some marks. along there. You do that all the way around. I've already put some marks on as you can see. I'm just adding to that. Like so. And then once again you just join the lines up. Next, what we're going to do is cut out the circle from the paper. So I'm going to use my cutter and then we can just open this out. And there we've got our big circle with a smaller circle in the middle. Two inches into the center and it was eight inches up to here. And then the one that I did, you've just seen on the mannequin, that was two inches to the center again, but it was three and a half inches over here. So much narrow a space to this one. So I've got some beautiful marbled fabric that I've done ages ago for a project. can't remember which one it was now. I'm going to use this fabric just because it's got some great patterns on there and I'm just going to decide whereabouts I want this to go. 
I'm thinking maybe down this area because there's a bit more pattern on there. And then what we need to do is draw around it. Be, I'm just too weak, maybe I'm just afraid of being alone. Well, I don't care because right now I feel the love that we said we would burn. Oh, I know that you feel it too. I know that I told you. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And next what we're going to do is just cut a line from one side to the other. Like so. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to grab some pins. And because it's been done on cotton fabric, I swear that I'm sober, just listen. And it's had the marbling effect. Hopefully, this isn't going to fray. And then we can just pin that on there. Like so. And look at the structure on there. Look at that. Beautiful. So you can see it's it's gorgeous. So that's obviously vertical. And it does stand out, doesn't it? Because it is quite sturdy with the whole marbling on it. Obviously on the other side, it's more pale with the marbling, but I do love that. Can you imagine that on a top or a dress? So I'm gonna just keep that on there for now. And I'm not going to do a little stitch around the edge because I think that is fine as it is. But we have got several more fabrics to use just because I wanted to try different ones out. So I think this was some leftovers from, they're all like leftover teaching project ones. So I'm going to use the smaller circle that I started off with and just because that one is definitely not going to fit. So we'll go with the smaller one and we'll do the same again. I can see that. So that's the slightly smaller circle. So I just want to see what a smaller one is going to look like. There we go. You can obviously see that that sits in really nicely. It still gets the ruffles like that first one, but it's just shorter in depth along here, isn't it? But the same sort of distance in the middle too for the length of the fabric. So you can see you can layer those up, which is really quite nice. Love that. Okay, so we've got more fabrics. Let's go with one that is going to <clears throat> fray. So I'll tell you what, let's do one of the blue ones here. So I did the smaller blue one, which was this one. And um, this was quite a, a sort of knitted fabric. So it was going to fray. So I'll do a bigger version of that to show you. I've got my knitted fabric. I want to show you how to hem it. So I'm going to just fold it over in half and then quarters. And I've also done the same for my paper. And then I'm going to just pop it in this corner and draw around if i leave tonight we could do this right we'll find the remedy or would you stay with me now till the morning would you stay till the morning night or would you follow me or would you let it be if i leave tonight open it 
up and there you have it. We're going to snip down one side. And next what we're going to need to do is a zigzag stitch all the way around and the centre to the sides down here as well. The stitches close together, I've put it on just one and a half. And now I'm going to start with the smaller circle in the centre and I'm going to line up my presser foot to the edge of the fabric. And then we're going to do the edge down this side. And then we're also going to do the larger part of the circle. I'm just going to use my cutter to cut off very carefully the excess fabric that we don't need just outside of that zigzag stitch. So that's how it looks. So let's try it on the mannequin. So because it's got a wider depth to it, it's going to look slightly different. So let's try it on a shoulder, for example. And just look at that little overhang. I love that. And then say you just pinned it on to say there, it just kind of falls. Isn't that lovely? We could have that a little bit more straight as well. Like so. It could come down like that. And then like that. Like a waterfall sort of effect, couldn't it? For the next one, I'm going to use this thicker cotton fabric. It is going to fray. It's some dyed fabric that I'd used a long time ago. And so again, I'm just going to be drawing this out. I'm going to cut it out and I'm also going to give it a hem just like this one. Draw it out my circle and this time rather than using the scissors, I'm going to use my Critting tool. When you're with her, I can see that. Also using a cutting mat underneath. And there's another thing that you can do on this one. Rather than leaving it straight where you've just cut into the circle, you can also do a bit of a curve here. When we go to put this over here, we we'll see it just lies slightly differently. So it's just got a little bit of a curve. That's quite nice like that as well, isn't it? You just play around with how you want that to go. Look at that. That's nice. I've also got another two little mini ones that I've done here. So if you use just like different fabrics, you can also get really different effects when the fabric hangs. So this is a smaller one. over the top here.
texture. Got another one here, got another marbled one. Oh, that looks so nice. Looks lovely with that fabric colour there. Just a little mini one actually because I didn't have too much fabric left. That's lovely. Very nice too. I'm just layering them up just to see what they'll look like. So I've literally just been collecting all the little bits of fabrics and I'm just going to keep them all for doing a slashed fabric sample later. So I just keep all the scraps. Then we've got rather lovely fabric which I think is going to be nice and floaty so I'll go with the small one for this one. fabric just drapes beautifully. Like it could even go around there. I'm enjoying putting it up here actually, so let's carry on with that theme. And then we've also got some curtain netting here. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. It's slightly smaller than the largest one that I've got, just because I have got this hat brim, bendable, flexible brim. It goes on the edges of hats when you make a crown and brim and just keeps that structure. But I am going to have a go at sewing this around the edge as I would like to just see whether we can get a really nice sort of flowing structured edging. So let's go over to the machine. Okay, and what I'd like to do is I've got the edge of my flounce and I'm just going to use and literally just pop it to the edge like so and then fold over the netting and I'm going to sew a zigzag stitch over it. So I've very nearly run out here. I don't think I'm going to make it quite to the end, but it's nearly there. And you know what? You can also use thicker fishing line. It, this is just what I had in. So, okay. It kind of goes quite 3D. I really, really like that. And just so you can see the difference between the one that hasn't got bring wire in it. Oh. 
and we could have that bring it down here just play around with it really ah. what do you think Layla what do you think hey what do you think really really hot outside and Layla's just been like sleeping all day like for hours underneath a bush in the garden aren't you keeping cool aren't you keeping cool so do you know what I love that I can see some mileage massive potential there to do some more of these so that sculptural effect I remember growing up actually and my mum used to have a kind of top which had these kind of flounces on the sleeves. They were, they were very sculptural and yeah. So let's try it on the sleeve, shall we Lena? Let's try it up here. It's a bit wacky really, isn't it? there we go. What do you think Layla? <laughs> so yeah, nice sculptural effect and then all the other flounces on there. I've done quite a few there haven't I? So you can just play around with how you want them to be but I just think layering them up like that it's just so sculptural. And I'm also going to do one with some thin fishing line that I've got and some more bit and fabric. Whoopsie <laughs> daisy. Hello. Hi. Hiya. Very fiddly. So that's kind of given me a little bit of a 3D effect. It's very thin line that I've got there. And I just wanted to see if it would work. Obviously, I've got to get rid of the water-soluble pen. But it has given it a bit of a sculpture. Do you know what? I've just literally popped a pin in there. And then I'm just sort of spinning the fabric around, just letting it fall like so. So it doesn't give that striking effect that this one gave with the thicker wire, but it definitely gives it a little bit of sculpture. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today and if you did please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you are not a subscriber today and you've just popped along and checked out this video and if you like it I do free content every week. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you would like to see more of the flounces and I will see you in the next video. Bye!